This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on his own. When he's not breaking the Stomping Ground's equipment, he's managing one of the best 154 pound prospects in the world, not the UK, in the world. Um, mate, just how good was that from Dan Howard? Well, I'm pleased other people say it because I just get loads of stick when I say, oh, he's this and that, but you can't watch that and not think this kid is unbelievable. So I look at the, the 154, he's the best of the bunch. He's the best of the bunch of the, in the 154 division of the prospects, shall we say, coming through. Um, they'll, they'll all be looking over and thinking, no, thank you to, to that. Um, he, he was absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, 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 the Fellery box there, nine and one record, tough as they come. As I say, he was like, I said in there, he was like Michael Myers. He kept getting up, like, like he was getting hit with bombs. And that I can't believe he got up from that body the shot. The body shot. Do you know the other one? The one that cracked him round the, round the side here? I thought, yeah, he's got up and he's got his legs about it. But when he crippled him with that body, honestly, I felt it in my, I felt it in my belly. I was like, oh, God. And then he got up and I was like, this, I hope they're paying him well. I hope Nisa and Keller are giving him a, giving him a good, uh, a good amount of money because he deserves it. He really does. Well, I'll tell you what, I was watching it with Cyrus Pattinson and I don't want to do the Geordies any disrespect, but in his accent, when that landed, he went, and then he got back up, he went, fuck me. I wouldn't have got back up from that. So. <laughs> It was, Fair fact, it, it was a serious it, shot. It was a serious, serious shot. Um, and like, I couldn't be prouder of him, to be honest. Dan, Daniel Toward is, a, is a, a really good person as well, which is above all else. Before boxing, he's a, he's a lovely, lovely kid. But when he gets in there, he's a demon. He's a complete demon. And I know like you can say, oh, it's delusion or whatnot, but I don't believe it is. Um, Newcastle needs a, a star since Ritson is as uh, Ritson's Ritson's still there. He's got a good fight with my uh, my guy Connor Walker next week. But Ritson's had his moments of, of headline in Newcastle, and I genuinely believe this is this is going to be the boy to to carry that flag going forward. Um, we look in Dan's room. There's a there's a, a really good view of St James's Park, and I, and I look at it and I says, "You're going to pack that out one day." And I really do believe that. Yeah, mate, fingers crossed because all the talk before about a fight at St James's Park, yeah, yeah. I really want there to be. Yeah, one. it was ne it was nearly there, wasn't it, with Ritson? But a uh, few years time, Daniel Toward will headline there. Yeah. Normally, fighters who've had as many fights as he had, granted, perhaps haven't looked as good. But normally, fighters who've had that many fights, yeah. you don't talk about matching them in the prospect v prospect yeah, fights. Yeah. But that is a possibility with Dan. Although, of course, yeah. you know. You've, can't just rush someone no, straight no, in listen, and chuck no, them in the deep end. No, but there's, there's no, good 50, 50, 60, 40 fights to be made, right? It's like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna throw him in there at European level, world, like trying to be, oh, he's gonna be world, like, world level straight away. It's a process, but what we don't wanna do, that's why we've matched him against fighters with winning records, all of them. If you look at all of Daniel's fights, they're all winning records. This guy tonight, nine and one, young fighter from Colombia, strong. He can, God, he could ship some welly, couldn't he, that um, earlier? Fair play and to he him. was feisty. Yeah, well. he was. He was. He tried to win. He scurried around in the ring in the first round, but then, it, then his coach, I heard his coach say, right, stick it on him. And when he tried to stick it on him, Dan chinned him. So it was um, that type of thing. But yeah, we're looking, we're looking hopefully at a British opponent next. Um, and we'll just go from there. But when you look at Dan, I'm pleased that you're saying it. Everyone's in the room saying Dave, who doesn't really give praise to anybody, was saying we've got a special fire on our hands here and it's true I mean Nissa's eyes lit up when Dan was performing like that in the ring and like I say but above all else he's a pleasure he's a real pleasure to work with Dan he's a top top kid and um, he keeps performing like that he's, he's going to be a, he's going to be a, a wealthy young man yeah Mate, I can't wait to see what 2025 holds yeah, nor after that I, performance nor, nor can I but He's, um, as I say, real pleasure to work with, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, a couple of other things I need to pick oh, your here brains we go. on. Here we fucking you knew go. this was happening. This is why I've been asking you for an interview I know, today. I, know, I, know. I, did um, say, I did say, didn't I? I said, wait till after the fight because then we'll have more to talk about. We can start off with Dan and then we don't have to waffle about what we're it's wearing. Because you knew he was going to look yeah, that good. I told you, didn't I? I said, I said let him have his, his showcase performance, which we knew he was going to do, and we blow him up in an interview. Then we talk some bollocks. Right, for the bollocks. Yes. Um, John Fury. Yeah. Darren Till, Tommy Fury. On the fight first. Yeah. Um, is, that fight, is that a fight that piques your interest? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good fight. It's a really good fight. Darren Till, from what I've... Um, I actually went to watch Darren Till. 
in Liverpool when he for that was my only ever UFC event when he boxed it when he uh, when he bought a uh, fight in uh, the fight in Liverpool. Um, he, he's he's a stand up fighter, isn't he, Darren Till? He's an aggressive stand up fighter. So he's got every chance against Tommy Fury. I can't wait for the fight. I think it's I think it's a very very good fight. It's an intriguing fight. Um, I, I might have a, somebody on the undercard, maybe maybe two, yeah. but we'll see. Um, but I know I'm really looking forward to the fight. Um, Darren Till's a scary human being. He's a lunatic, isn't he? Let's, he, let's say it as it is. I'm being honest. Like he, he comes for me uh, every now and again on, on Twitter. And honestly, I just think every time I see a notification, I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck it. Every time I see it come through, but then he, he's, um, he's good value, isn't he, Darren Till? He stuck it right on John Fury, which I did find quite amusing. I've got to be honest, I did find it quite amusing, especially it's like... He, calling him Little John. <laughs> he just said, okay, Little John, well, you've not been seen or like for six months. It was good fun. Do you know what I mean? It's good fun. And Big John Fury's good value, isn't he? But I think he met his match there with Darren Till at the press conference. I'm looking forward to the fight. Dare I say that John felt like he had to intervene because Darren has got that intimidation yeah. factor about him. And perhaps he was putting Tommy under a bit more pressure than John would have liked. I just like, what? Listen, Darren Till, like what he says, he doesn't fear boxing because what is somebody going to do really though if Tommy Fury's like landing a few stiff jabs and Darren Till just puts him in a headlock like it's, it's, it's game over in a real fight situation but it's, mixed ga martial arts but, but, it's game, but it's game over isn't it so I just feel like I wouldn't be comfortable like, like imagine one of your fighters fighting Darren Till you just think well he could just karate chop him or put him in some submission but like you don't know do you because he's a, he's a loose cannon but that's what's going to put bums in seats and that's what's going to pe make people pay the pay-per-view because what is Darren Till going to do he could outbox him could just walk straight through him and stop him like or he could just put him DDT him on the floor you, you never know though do you Oscar you never know with him he's a loose cannon he's a mixed martial artist not but, Triple H but but well, like what I say like he's he's good value isn't he he's he's hilarious to listen to and he's he's just nuts so <laughs> it's what's going to put bumps in seats I'm looking forward to it yeah, it is going to be good fun that yeah, week in Manchester sure. in, in January um, back a little bit to last weekend yes Jake Paul Mike Tyson did you stay up to watch I did at the time? I did I did I watched did, did, did you intend to or did you just watch after Taylor Solano no I've got to be Paris? honest I, I, I wasn't going to but then I just thought like the, 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 the person on my shoulder was like Tyson's gonna roll back the clock. I was one of them. I was one of them idiots. Hands up! I was one of them them idiots that thought Mike Tyson is gonna roll back the years, um, to and he's gonna beat Jake Paul. But ultimately, we got an old man in there, and it was let's be honest, it was shite, wasn't it? It was awful to watch. Um, Jake Paul, to be fair, he 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 didn't put the foot on the gas. I genuinely don't believe that. I don't think he's. And I don't really rate Jake Paul, if I'm honest, but he's he's not horrible. He's not horrible. But so you think he could have stopped Mike? Yes, if he'd have I do. Him. Yeah, I do think that. Um, that's my opinion. But ultimately, I'm glad that it it ended almost how it did. It was like as there was there wasn't much damage done. It was like right, that was it. It wasn't great watch. But the positive note was, and I mean this, Taylor Serrano yet again was one of the best fights you can watch. Both uh, women put on an absolutely unbelievable display and I would like to see the fight again. I would like to see Katie Taylor fight Chantel Cameron. I'd like to see Serrano fight Chantel Cameron. I would like to see those girls have fight each other and then they can all prob they're all probably going to hang it up after that. But there's, there's still a couple more good nights for Katie Taylor, who, by the way, is the best female fighter of all time. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, let's just say, for the sake of this question, there's one fight left for Katie at Croke Park. Yes. Would you rather see the third fight with Amanda or Chantel? Chantel, because it's 1-1. One, because one. it's 1-1. One, one. But I, would want, I do want to Amanda, see... Amanda, they were better I fights. Do, I do want to see Serrano-Taylor, though. I do want to see... I want to see Katie Taylor have two more fights. I want to see a fight... Serrano and Chantel Cameron. Yeah. Just one more thing on the Mike and Jake situation. I know obviously people people care for Mike Tyson because he is yeah. a legend. So it was he's got out the ring safely. He's yeah. made a lot of money. Yeah. But because he's done so, there's I guess a threat that it happens again. And even he's been quite open to it happening yeah. again. I mean, he saw Oliver McCall. Do you expect him to? I hope not. I really hope not. But you're not going to stop him, are you? Someone hands him a twenty million dollar check. You're not going to stop him. The highlight of the night was when he walked and his ass was out in that Rikishi thong. Do you know what I mean? That was the highlight of the night. So, um, uh, of, the, of the Tyson-Jake Paul situation, that was the best moment. 
It was hilarious. <laughs> it's not um, what you need at 5.30 when you're trying to stay 5.30 in the morning, you're seeing Mike Tyson's 58-year-old ass hanging out that black thong. So I was just like... Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it is what it is, but I thought it was crap to watch the, the main event, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, we definitely got more than we bargained for in, in that sense. I want to um, see Jake Paul against Carl Frost. I thought you going to say you want to see Jake Paul's ass. I want to see, never say that ever again, Oscar. <laughs> I want to see Jake Paul against Carl Frost or Tony Bellew. That, I would find that, I would be invested in that. This in that. might sound like a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it. Does Jake Paul get knocked out in both of them fights? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Come on. Carl Frotch, too big, too, Frotch. too big, too strong, horrible right hand. If he's too big, right. too strong for GGG, then. Yeah, yeah I, I just think, yeah, Carl Frotch and Tony Bellew. Yeah, yeah. They both batter him, wouldn't they? They both batter him. And the, and the build up is so, would be amazing because Tony's like dead, would be dead aggressive, and Carl Frotch's dry humour is just elite, isn't it? So I would like to see that. Do you think with what we saw from Betterbev and Daniel Dubois, they're actually calling Jake's bluff and going, look, if you want to fight a professional, I'm here. I mean, it'd be the easiest would. money of they course, would ever yeah, yeah, but of course they would. Of course, I mean, better be like, there's no way on this earth there's as much chance of, of Jake Paul fighting better be of, of me having an, a six-pack at the end of this week. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to happen. I've got a four-pack. I've got a four pack, bit of a fridge. In, bit of a four, no. a four pack in the I've, fridge I've, at I've hotel. Got, I've got a four pack uh, with a bit of a squaggy bit at the bottom. But, but, okay, David. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, that fight's not going to happen. It's, Jake Paul is never fighting Arta Better Beer. He's never fighting Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois would, would, can you imagine if one of... If, uh, Isn't that for, one that... Forget the backhand. Can you imagine Daniel Dubois putting a jab on Jake Paul's nostril? What would actually happen? It's, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth thinking about, would it? I want to see Tony Bell, you come back to the Coldwell Gym in Rotherham and fight Jake Paul. That's what I want to see. Or Carl Froch. I want to see the, 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 that, to me, I would pay, take my money to watch that because I just think it was absolutely hilarious. Or fight Dan Toward. <laughs> Mate, I'm here for every single one of them fights you yeah. spoke about. Um, Jack Cattrall. Yes. Cattrall Barboza? Yeah, probably. Who, who knows? It depends if... Um, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the rankings, but I believe Jack's going to be made number one. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be. Um, Barboza didn't pay his sanction fee in his last fight. It was a 10-rounder. You can't make someone... You can't be number one. You can't challenge for a world title off the back of a 10-rounder. So whoever decided that um, for him or for himself is a crazy move, but... Um, yeah, he, 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 he boxed a 10-rounder. It wasn't an eliminator for the world title. Jack boxed Regis Progo, paid his sanction fee. Jack's been, Jack was number one for years. So he's climbed back and he's on the string of Linares, Josh Taylor, Regis Progre. Jack, Ta Jack Cattrall deserves a world title fight. And if we have to fight Arnold Barboza next, so be it. We'll make the fight next. Not a fucking problem. Yeah. And I know this wouldn't be of concern to Jack because what matters is him making money and winning that world title. Yeah. But if it's on the matchroom, Golden Boy five versus five. Yeah, no problem. I guess there's a pressure to get the, the matchroom win as well. There's, 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 Barboza would not beat Jack Cattrall. Uh, uh, that's just my opinion. People, other people might think differently, but not a fucking prayer is he beating Jack Cattrall. What have you made of the Eddie and Oscar? Yeah, it's brilliant. I would like to see the 5v5 just to see I Oscar. I would say you'd like to see the fight because Ed, Eddie's like, yeah. No, De La Hoya said he wants two months, yeah, by yeah, the way, to just, prepare just, for Hearn. Just for, for banter purposes, it would be really funny. <laughs> but um, to see Eddie Hearn, the, 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 the what does he call him? The Billericky... The Billericky Iceman. Billericky Iceman fighting the former pound-for-pound pound great Oscar De La Hoya. Can you imagine Oscar De La Hoya just chopping Eddie down the flipping stomach? Uh, with a, I with still a, can't believe he said he needs two months, with, with, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oscar, Oscar, yeah, I need two months. I was like, I was actually thinking, I was thinking like, really? Two months? But it's good fun, isn't it? Like, Oscar's a, a, a massive name. He's, he's done, he's a pound-for-pound pound great. And I do think those clapback Thursdays are actually really hilarious. Um, Eddie's obviously great value. They're two huge personalities. But the build-up for the 5v5 would be absolutely epic. So let's get it done, guys. Let's get, let's get, put egos to a side. You've got Turkey Alal's shape making all the best fights. Make the 5v5 and we'll, we'll see, some, uh, see some brilliant fights. And yeah, Jack Cattrall would whoop Arnold Barboza. Let's go. Final word on that man there, Dan Towers. Like what I keep saying, I get, oh, Sam says this about all of his fights. That is Every, your job also. Every, everybody that's watched that fight can't think anything other, even if you don't like me. You can't look at that performance and think, no, that's, yeah, it was good. But that, no, you look at it and just think, wow. What a stunning performance. And it's off the back of an 
a, a, another stunning performance. He's getting better and better. And like I say, Michael fucking Myers there, who got chopped over four times. He kept getting up. And, and, uh, and, and I was relieved when it was stopped. I was thinking, my God, I, the body shot. Still can't get over how he got up from that body shot. Yeah, it was, a, it was, it was honestly, the Haribos were swirling around in my stomach, uh, th thinking, why, how the hell did he take that shot? But listen, um, we're, we're, thank you for him for taking the fight. Nine and one record. And uh, keep following Dan Tao because, get, like what I say, great person, pleasure to work with, and uh, he is going all the fucking way, Oscar Bevers.